Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to have a look at slider in Swift UI so let's get straight into it. So slider is a control that we can use to represent a value on a scale. It can be useful if you're building features relating to controlling the volume or setting a distance for example. For things where you want to control the amount of something like a quantity you probably want to use a stepper and you can check out my video stepper in Swift UI to learn more about this. So in order to use our slider we first of all need to bind it to some kind of source of truth. So let's state Let's create a state property called volume, which will be bound to our slider. So let's create a slider and we'll briefly discuss the options that we have. So when you create an instance of slider, you'll see that you have all these options. So you have the opportunity to get the value. You can also set a range for the slider. You can also set a minimum and maximum label and you can also check to see when the editing has changed. So you have quite a few options available to you as well as setting your own, you know, custom label view as well. But the option that we're going to go for is the simple one, which is the value and in. So we're going to bind to some kind of value and we're also going to set some kind of range to it as well. So let's do that now. So now that we've done that, we've said here that we want the slider to be bound to the volume. So whenever the value for this changes, it will update our state of truth, our source of truth here, our state property. And we're also setting a range of it. So it's going to be starting from a minimum of zero all the way to 100, which is the maximum. And I've just applied some padding onto the VStack so it's clearer for you to see the slider. Cool. So now what we're going to do is actually add in a text variable here. So Pause. What we're going to do now is add in some text so we can actually see the value within our volume. So let's do that now. Cool. So now let's actually just run this and see what happens. So if I change the value, you'll see here that it's actually updating and reading it so we can actually see what our volume is all the way up to 100%. Now, you may notice as well that it's automatically formatting it because it's a double and it's formatting it to single values. But if I actually remove this integer here and actually test it out, you'll see that it's actually going through every single decimal point here. So, so an easy way to do this is to just convert our double into an integer. Cool. So also as well, if we wanted to, we could actually restrict this and be stricter with how much this increases by. So we could actually add in and specify how much we want to allow the user to be able to change the amount by. So right now, it's just set to just, you know, increase by whatever. But what about if we want to restrict it to increase by only five steps? So we can actually apply and define our own step count on the slider as well. So if I just type here, step, and then five, and let me just clean this up a bit. <clears throat> You'll notice that when I change the volume, it now only goes up in increments of five. So we could also check as well to see if our slider has changed so we can perform some kind of action. But before we do that, let's do a bit of refactoring by moving these out into their own um, properties or constants at the top here. And now in the in property, we'll use our range and for our step, we'll use our step. Okay, cool. So in order to see if our slider has changed, what we're going to do is actually add in a plus and a minus button onto the edge edges of our slider. So first of all, let's actually create some private extensions for those buttons. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So we've got two functions here in a private extension and the reason why I've added them here and not directly in the views because I just prefer to separate out my logic for any view into extensions. But if you actually look at our increase, what we're saying here is that if our volume is less than the upper bound, so the maximum, which is 100, then we'll increment it by the step or else we can, in the decrease, what we're saying here is that if the volume is greater than our lower range, which is zero, we'll subtract the step that we defined here which is five so now what we need to do is actually add in our plus and minus buttons and if you want to learn more about buttons check out my videos buttons in swift ui and button styles in swift ui so again what i'm going to do is create another private extension specifically for these buttons just so we don't clutter up our view cool so this time in this extension what we've got is we've got our increase button which is going to be a computed property that returns some kind of view and that view in this case is a button and within our increase button, we've said that when someone taps on 
the button it should actually increase it so call the increase function that we have here with an animation block so we'll animate it and then for our label we're just using an ss symbol plus and then for our decrease button we're doing the exact same thing where we're just using animation to decrease it and returning the minus um, ss symbol as its label within the button so i like to do this whenever i have a view that can start to grow and get bigger I'll actually separate out those views into computed properties that are more readable and easier for you to scan and understand what is going on. So this is just like a little swift UI tip. So now what we want to do is actually add these buttons onto either side of our slider. So let's actually tap this out and then we'll break it down. So now when you look at the UI, you should see that you have your increase button here and you have the decrease button here. And that's because we've put it in a H stack. This is actually going to lay out our views horizontally. So we've got our increase button at the start, then our slider and then our decrease. And then finally, we have now our closure, which will tell us whether the slider has changed. So that's why we have this property here has changed. So let's actually test this out and see what happens. So if we actually hit the plus button, you'll now notice that it actually increases the volume by five and we get an animation with our slider if you actually go all the way down with our minus button you'll notice that it also decreases it as well and we're still able to interact with the slider as well and change the volume manually ourselves as well but you may be wondering what's the point of us using this closure here to tell us when editing has changed so what we actually want to do now is that if someone is actually dragging across and changing the value we actually want to disable our button so you can actually tap on it whilst you're actually changing the volume using the slider. So let's see how we can do this now. So the first thing we actually need to do is actually create a source of truth that tells us that the slider has changed. So let's actually add in another state property called has changed that tells us whether the slider has changed or not. So the only purpose of this state property is to tell us and to hold the value for whether the sliding slider is editing or not. So within our closure here, we actually want to check, we actually want to set our has changed to this value here. And then finally, what we want to do on our button is we actually want to disable and change the opacity of them depending on the value of has changed. So if has changed is true, we're going to disable the button and also dim the opacity a bit. So let's do that now. So we said here, that if has changed is true, then we're going to set the opacity to 0 0.5. And if it isn't, so if this is false, then we're going to set it to 1. And then it will want to disable the button. So if has changed is true, then disable is going to be set to true. And if it's false, then disable will be set to false. So depending on the change that we make to our state property, we're going to change and configure some interactions for our buttons. So now let's actually test this out and see what happens. So now if I start dragging across, you'll notice that our buttons dim out and we can't actually select them. But if I release this, you'll see that now our buttons are interactable again. So at the time of this recording, um, there's actually an issue with setting your own custom label on a slider. So that's why I've actually just added a text above it like so. But if you want to set your own custom label for some reason, it doesn't really seem to render it properly. But what we are able to do is we're able to set a minimum and maximum label on the trailing and leading edges. So let's actually see how we can do this now. So what we're going to do is actually use a new version of slider and um, just update it. So we'll remove this and replace it. So if you actually just type here slider, and if you just scroll down, so the option that we want is this option here where we have a value, um, we have a value, range, step, the label that we're going to ignore and delete, minimum la minimum value label, maximum value label, and on editing chain. So we just hit enter on this. So what we're going to, need to do is we're just going to format this out. So for the value, we're going to set that to be our volume. And then for the in, we're going to set that to our range. And then for the step, we're going to set that to our step. And then for the label, just hit enter. Cool. So for our label, we're just going to leave that empty like so. And then for the minimum value and maximum value, we're going to set that to be the upper and lower bounds of our range. So let's do that now. And then for our on hitting editing change, we're going to set that to has changed. And then what we're going to do is assign our has changed here like we did before. 
And then what we're just going to do now is delete this slider. So we should have a new slider like so. So you should have something that looks like this. Cool. So if we actually just render this on the screen and just see what happens. You should now notice that you actually have a text here. So the lower bound zero and the upper bound here on the edges of our slider. So now if we actually just interact with this as normal, you'll see that it works all fine. And when we start dragging, it disables a button. So now we actually have our own custom for you control working nicely. And like I mentioned before, the label closure here, for some reason, um, doesn't really seem to work. So I don't know when they're gonna fix this, but as of right now, it doesn't seem to work nicely. So, so that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up, as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.